Hi guys, Paul from Journey of a Petrol Head and we are looking at the conclusion video of the SL280 00 version. This is the R129, came out in 89 at the Geneva Motor Show um, and it evolved over the years into this current guise. This was the last version of it because they stopped selling it in 2001. So, let's have a look. Uh, right, we start with the wheels. 17 inch wheels and they look fantastic. They fill the wheel arches. They don't have the standard wheel problem we've seen on things before where you have 17 inch wheels and you have a huge gap in the arches and they look ridiculous. They're really nice on this. You can actually get 18s in the higher spec SL500, 600s in the AMG range. The 17s look perfect. The road holding is great. We do like these wheels and tyres. Fantastic stuff. Now, the headlights. Okay, so on the higher spec models again, they offered Xenon headlights and for a car of that era, that's very impressive. For the standard one for the SL280 and lower spec versions, they were halogen bulbs, which are easy to change and they have a good range. There's no uh, daylight running lights, they didn't exist back then and obviously you can't have LEDs because no one heard of LEDs back then. The styling touches in this car, we do actually like, we like the hardtop, this is a convertible car, do not forget. We put photographs and video to show you, but we have a hardtop fitted here, we're deliberately reviewing this with the hardtop to show you what she's like with the hardtop, right? So we like the folding mirrors, we like the hardtop, it's designed in, you actually wouldn't know if you weren't familiar with these cars that this is not an actual coupe. You would think this is a coupe, it isn't, it's a convertible, right? We like the body lines, we think the design, 10 years old. Hasn't aged a day, you could design this out of the box today, it would look brilliant on the marketplace, right? We like the body colour bumpers, that was a later addition in the evolution, and the whole stance of the car is nice and low, and it's wide, it's aggressive, but it's still got a Mercedes air about it, it's still got a good feel of quality. The front seats are immensely comfortable, they're electric, they still work 10 years later, everything moves, nice and comfortable, there's no lumbar support, doesn't need lumbar support, you know I haven't got the world's greatest back on a long drive, and this is really comfortable on a long drive, and they're heated seats with two different settings for the heat, so we, we like that, um, we like the driving position, it's a great driving position, you're not too low as you are in some low cars, but you're not too high, a lot of headroom, we like it. The instrument cluster is one of the best we've seen in ages. It's dead easy to see everything. It's got all the information I like in an instrument cluster. It is simple to figure out what, where you're overheating or not, what your fuel economy is, is actually right in front of you. Uh, back in the days when people bothered, I wouldn't buy this car to save fuel, but okay. But it's simple, nice five dials, and one of the dials has three readings in it. We do, we like the setup here. The controls are very, very well placed. They're easy to reach. They're not swooped in towards the driver, but they're not out of reach. If you remember one of the cars we reviewed before, I had to really, really lean forward to try and get to reach some of the controls. That's not the case here. We like the design here. Remember, it's, it was thought of in the 1980s, launched in 89. So it's, it's a different idea to the 1990s thinking. And actually, I prefer this. It's nice and easy and everything's easy to see, right? Uh, good ventilation, you know what it's like, I have to have air blown on my face when I'm driving, nice big vents that aren't blocked by oh, bad design, your heart, you're too close to the steering wheel or whatever, this is really, really good, we like this a lot. Automatic wipers, air conditioning, lots and lots of small storage areas, um, so it's, it's comfortable for driving, right? Now, it's a two and two, so there is no power sockets in the rear, there's, very, I mean, there's no rear seats really, unless you're a very small child, or somebody whose legs have been chopped off, there are people fit in the back. Right? There's no, the back seats are useful for bags, they're not useful for people. The other issue is if there's people in the back seats, well the rollover hoop is in the back and it'll pop up, it may catch some heads, so I'm not sure I put people in the back of this, it really is a two and two. Um, what else do we have? We have lots of headroom, albeit being a convertible, and this is a hard top that's in there, and even with the hard top there's lots of headroom. Lots of visibility around, the rear window as you can see is huge, there's no obstructions. My one complaint about the rear window is you can't really judge where the car ends. We'll come to that when we're trying to park. Uh, the mirrors are good, um, so it's, it's nice and easy to drive. It's actually, it is actually quite simple to park once you're careful where the rear of the car is. That can be an issue because there's no sensors, obviously just predated all that stuff. So we've got to be careful on, on the rear parking. The handling is great, it has to be said. The braking is fantastic actually, really really impressed with the ABS brakes and discs all around. There's good power delivery in this car and the gearbox transmission is nice when you're just cruising along but when you flip it into sport mode like we did on the test drive, yeah it delivers the power better. Now a word about the kick down, the kick down is a little slow because it's an older generation gearbox, it's only got five speeds don't forget so the kick down isn't fantastic so you need to plan your overtaking but when you get it right it's very very nice to drive. Smooth shifts and well well weighted on the gearbox ratio is really really good 
road noise there isn't any real road noise it's a mercedes you wouldn't expect any there's good views from the mirrors the blind spots are tiny um, and the only issue is this gap here because the window ends up here uh, and it's the back of the roof line kind of soups up a little bit so it's a little hard to just judge where this ends so just just that's my only worry just be careful there's no front or rear parking heads, okay, predates all that again, but it is simple to park and it's easy to know where the front of the car ends, so that's, that's nice. It's comfortable to drive on a long distance and it has stood the test of time very well. The interior is in great nick, you know, there's no rattles or squeaks. And the other thing we notice, being a convertible, the road noise when the hard top is on, there's a little wind whistle here and there, but it's nothing to worry about. It's actually very tame, really. It's nothing like what I expected it to be. Now. We then looked at the engine bay, and everything is easy to get to in the engine bay because this is not the bigger engine, this is the smaller engine you get in this particular car. Everything is quite easy to find and read and change, and I like that idea, it has to be said, so it gets a full marks for me on the engine bay. Now, this is one of the older cars we've reviewed, and the one I suppose that we put this up against is the Jaguar S Type that we did recently. And the S Type actually scored 95%, it did quite well. Um, this Mercedes SL280 has gained a journey of a petrolhead score of just over 78%. A 10 year old car, sports car, very niche marketing for this particular car, 78%, I think that's quite a good score to be honest. If we compare that to the likes of the Peugeot 108 that we drove, the Hyundai i30 we drove. So the Peugeot 108 got 75%, the Hyundai got 64%. Yeah. Uh, in fact, if you look at that 208 we drove as well, the 1.6 diesel on those roads in Greece, uh, way back at the start of all this, that only scored 64%. So this has actually stood out against all those and beaten them. And they're all much newer than this particular car. So, you know what? This is an interesting little bus. I wouldn't mind one of these as a toy car. I could even live with it on an everyday basis. If you don't need to carry four people, there's a big boot. It's economical to a point. It's obviously a petrol engine. But it's still at the test of time really, really well. I mean, will the Hyundai's and Peugeot stand up so long over a 10 year period? I don't know. We've got to find out. We'll review it in 10 years and we'll let you know. Okay, this has been Paul for Journey for Petrolhead. Like and subscribe to the videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Like and subscribe. We'll see you later.